Welcome to Locable's overview of monetizing digital the right way for local print publishers. In the next few minutes, we're going to go through uh, a, a myriad of ways that you can make money and deliver value, that you can build your audience in the process, and that you can establish yourselves as really the anchor tenant in your local community. Now, I want to highlight that at Locable, we have this worldview that print is not dying but print-only businesses are. The simple reality is we live in a multi-dimensional world and businesses are looking for multi-dimensional solutions. You need to be able to provide this and convey the value of each along the way. I'll touch on a little bit uh, what each has to offer as we run through this today. I will mention that Local does help publishers maximize the assets they already have in place. So as we talk through this, if you're looking for assistance, we'd love to talk with you after the fact. Uh, and our network is about 80 strong, working with local magazines, newspapers, and uh, independent online only publishers. So the first thing you have to do if you're going to be successful in this world is think differently. Look at the world through a solutions approach, uh, solving real problems, creating solutions that are unique, not merely cheapest or uh, or competitive in that regard, but unique. And so I often like to present the ADA model for decision making, attention, interest, desire, and action. Every consumer goes through this in making a purchase and different types of advertising and different types of promotion play to different levels here on the ADA model. Understanding how they fit together will help you be more effective in your sell selling process, but more also more effective at delivering solutions. And you'll see as we go through what you truly have to offer, the different things play in different areas. And keep in mind, you're the marketing expert, they're not. Don't let them say no. People will say no even to their own detriment. Uh, give them a solution that they really can't say no to and help them see that as the reality of the situation. So our approach is revenue first. Many of you on this call might be thinking to yourselves, well, I'd love to make money from digital, but I don't have enough traffic. I don't have much traffic. My Facebook fan base isn't very impressive. I have no email list or a small email list or something to this effect. And traditionally, that would be a problem. But the traditional process is no longer valid. In fact, our process that I'm going to go through here today will help you make money and deliver value while growing your audience for that long-term revenue growth in the process. So how do you drive revenue from Go? Well, you look at things like social promotions. You look at things like sponsored content. And I'll show you the different flavors of sponsored content available to you. Uh, sponsored emails and coupons are fantastic, uh, as are site sponsors and charter sponsors. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, and then audience extension and impact, delivering a, a, a web presence for your, your customers. <clears throat> You'll note that the last two are bolded. These are areas that as a local publisher you probably can't do on your own, uh, but it's definitely something that you can deliver with the help of a company like Locable. All right, so what's a community sponsor? We take a lot of our guides from the real world. So you can see a, uh, a subway here local to me. They had a high school um, sponsorship badge up. They're very proud of this. This approach has happened in real life for generations, and it's something that you can tap into with your digital presence, selling sponsorships of digital. So think about how you can deliver opportunities to brag to your local leaders through this sponsorship. Lock them in on pricing and fund your growth. When you sold your first print ad, when you launched your product, it was probably before you actually had a print product to sell. This is what uh, the modern day equivalent is in community sponsorship. So really explore how you can deliver that. And it's also not for everyone. So if you have an advertiser that passes, don't sweat it. You're looking for the local leaders. We have a lot more on that, but I'm going to keep it simple as we roll. What it allows you to do is it allows you to convey value ahead of details. See, this is In-N-Out, which is uh, one of my favorite places to get a burger. And their menu is incredibly simple at least the one that they put out there, because people have a problem making a decision. And what does this have to do with your business? Well, digital, the great thing and the bad thing about digital is you have so many valuable offerings that you can deliver. So you want to keep it simple, convey the value, make saying yes easier, and help get the conversation going. It's the start, it's not the finish. And like in and out there's a secret menu. You have a secret menu that you can convey. So start with the simple things and then work off of that in your sales conversations. Now, that really lends itself nicely to where we're going. And that is the notion that with digital in particular, editorial and revenue activities can play nicely together without breaking the rules. If you're a pay-to-play publication, fantastic. If you're not fantastic in both cases, this is something that is going to work for you. 
So I want to show you something that we've done with a couple of our publishers. Here in Mansfield, we did a pumpkin patch guide. If you're a community publication, this is something you should do. And by the numbers, you can see that we featured eight farms and mazes. Uh, we had a couple themed events, and it was shared to Facebook a couple hundred times. It was a good piece of content, and those farms and mazes and pumpkin patches were thrilled to be featured. It actually spawned three follow-on articles. See, while you can make money right away, it's nice to deliver on that in the long term through more content. So we did a trunk or treat guide. We asked Facebook, because the Facebook page has high engagement, what does fall mean to you? And after Halloween, we came back and said, show us the pictures that you took of picking a pumpkin. And we got a whole slew of input. And so you can see, you can create these story arcs and engagement and community affinity, almost like a bulletin board, if you will, where people can share and you can curate. And those were shared to Facebook a couple hundred times. Well, in total, there were thousands of page views. There were tens of thousands of Facebook impressions. And you'll notice, yes, there was a sponsor. So this sponsor was not an advertiser. They had been doing what many advertisers do. Oh, I'd love to advertise. Call me next month. Next month. Next month. Well, it turns out that when you're heading into Halloween, Halloween won't wait. And if they wanted to be the sponsor, they had to act. And so they did. And now they're looking at continuing that conversation with the publisher. And as a result, the publisher earned $450 for the sponsorship. $450 for content that you should feature anyways that also happened to get a non-advertiser to move forward, to progress that conversation. That is an effective approach. Now, as we continue and you look at what a social promotion is and how guides can further extend this, social promotions are giveaways, sweepstakes, or contests. Uh, for this call, let's not worry about the details, but the point is they run through social media and how you run them matters. So, in this case, Idaho Falls joined us. They went out and they sold three week-long promotions, which we executed on their behalf over a six-week period. In addition to getting paid and in addition to adding a thousand new Facebook likes to their Facebook page, they added 250 email opt-ins to their email list. This is why we say there's things you can do today that make you money and grow your audience in the long term. Now they've got a thousand more people on Facebook and 250 more people via email that they can reach for the next thing, whether it's the breaking news or whether it's another promotion. So these are things that snowball. Likewise, the guides. After the pumpkin patch, we did the area holiday light show. And yet again, there was a sponsor. This time it was a print advertiser who spent a couple hundred dollars. It elevated engagement and again, spawned follow-on content. Ride these waves seasonally throughout the year. There's always things you can tap into to sell sponsorships against. And there's also things that just sort of work anytime. What's your favorite day trip within driving distance of where you live? Do day trip guide. These are things that can be sponsored. Does a sponsor influence the content? Absolutely not. Is it great for them to be associated? You better believe it. So social promotions have these tremendous values, and then we can go even further and we can tie in additional things like, hey, what's your favorite thing about our publication? Well, we did that very thing with Susquehanna Life up in Pennsylvania, and we got 99 responses in the first few days that said, this is my favorite thing. We turned it into an article. It's a way to pat ourselves on the back. Well, publisher pat herself on the back. And this becomes a sales tool. It becomes a piece of content that's highly shareable, but it becomes a sales tool. As you can see, there is this ongoing interactive play between revenue activities and editorial activities. But it doesn't stop there. You can continue with things like user-inspired content. And here you can see we posted a simple question, what would you like to see in 2015? Now, if you don't have an engaged Facebook page, this won't work yet. But when you do, you'll notice there's 132 comments. That's engagement, and that's viral reach. 6,000 people in a small community. Her fan base is, is under 3,000. That's fantastically dominating Facebook statistics. And so it was really about building community around content. So we went out, and we actually created a piece of content with the responses. And then we shared that content that we created on her website back to Facebook. And now you can see the reach that had, 20,000 people, type of engagement and clicks. And what's great is this referred to dozens of businesses and business types and industries. Now they can follow up with these businesses and say, hey, we referenced you here. You should create a directory list and you should talk to us about promotion. Clearly, our audience is interested. It is a fantastic way to feed content and to start conversations with businesses. 
And also note that every local site should have a robust calendar and robust directory, and too often there either is no calendar or directory, or it's relegated to a second-class citizen. It has to be part of your strategy. And Locable's technology makes this easy, but it needs to be part of it regardless. In this case, we have publishers do review contests. Most reviews uh, in a 30-day period will get a profile, and people start promoting the publisher. They start engaging in ways they didn't otherwise. It becomes part of the content strategy, and you can sell ads against this. Likewise, we've created a tool called the uh, Customer Reviews Widget, which can embed on any website to show off reviews. The point of this is it's building alliances around your brand as the anchor tenant and driving engagement with your digital properties. Does this take away from print? How could it? It's absolutely additive. And so we like to say we work with publishers to build Main Street for the 21st century. Well, now we're building roads that lead to Main Street. All of this should hopefully be foreshadowing what I'm about to say, and that is that the days of cold calling are numbered. Every single lead in your community can be done in a warm way, even if you've never talked to them. Because you can write an article, you can feature an event, you can add their directory listing as a free variation, you can send them a notification to alert them to it, and start the conversation where you're giving them something. Not because you're pandering, but because it's relevant to the community. And then a few weeks later, Hey, hopefully everything's working out well with the directory listing. Can I answer any questions? Perhaps you'd be interested in learning about some of the other promotional activities we have available to reach our audience. And now that lead, which effectively is cold, has been made quite a bit warmer. So when you look at monetizing, your audience is part of it, but you can go beyond the audience. You can start thinking of yourself in terms of an agency, an ad agency, and you can reach people on other properties. Did you know? that you can sell ads using something called audience extension that reaches locals on nationwide websites. Let me say that again. You can sell ads that appear on other people's websites, including folks like Better Homes and Gardens, but only targeted at locals at the zip codes that you're interested in. This is something that you can sell. All the data is based on uh, Quantcast and Nielsen. This is not retargeting if you're familiar with that, but this is something you can sell and make money from because you get a wholesale price, you sell it at resale, and all of a sudden you're making money as an ad agency. There's all sorts of media plans available. It's very, very cool. Do not overlook the ability to deliver this. Anecdotally, I'll share a story that a publisher, we were talking with her and her sales team, her sales team scoffed at this. They thought it was silly. That publisher happened to be on the board of a local private school, and she found out later that very week that that private school was spending $800 a month on a service quite similar to this. She's on the board. She should be the one benefiting from that. It is an absolute opportunity today, and you have infinite scale. So whether you're trying to make just a little bit of money, you want digital to be a little bit of a uh, better piece of your business, whether you want to grow and, and you see over time it becoming a significant piece, or maybe your goal is to become the local leader, you can move forward. It's not an all or nothing proposition. Unlike print where you have to put out so many pages with so many ads, you can do digital step by step. And with Locable, everything you do is magnified. So I hope that you got some great ideas that you can take from this. I want to leave you with one last story I got out of business school. This is my favorite story from business school, and it's about Harley Davidson. See, in 1959, Harley Davidson was the absolute dominant player in local motorcycles in the United States, or in motorcycles in the United States. Everyone in the industry on Wall Street said that the industry is saturated. There is not room for growth. And so when a little company called Honda wanted to move into the U.S., Harley was not intimidated. And Honda smartly said, you know what? We can't compete. We're going to make small bikes for non-riders. Instead of the tough, burly guys who rode motorcycles at the time, we're going to make it for the nice people, the family, the women who wouldn't otherwise ride. And our tagline is going to be, you meet the nicest people on a Honda. So Harley gladly gave them the small bike market. And Honda did something. They built out their distribution. They tested their marketing. They got better at building bikes. And they grew geographically. So they had a nice network of dealers. Now, once they had a foothold, they started building bigger bikes and bigger bikes and bigger bikes until they started actually eating into Harley's share. The giveaway, the low price solution, the low price option, the low revenue option became the anchor for Honda to completely come in and eat away at Harley. So what did this mean? Well, within six years, Honda was doing $77 million in revenue. Now, rewind, 
6.6 million was what Harley did when it was saturated. Honda was more than 10 times larger in less than a decade. And a year later, foreign bikes in total made up 85% of the market. So my question to you is, are you going to be Harley or are you going to be Honda? Are you going to embrace the advantage you have and take advantage of it and grow in new ways? Or are you going to sit on it and give it away to other people because it's a smaller dollar amount? Don't sit on it. Profitable revenue is to be had with digital. It will grow print when you do it the right way. Go out, sell something, you can absolutely do it. If you want to talk with local about how we can work with you, we'd love to have a chat. We're all about building community around local publishers, whether it's technology, training, and resources, or whether you're interested in our publisher concierge service where we can literally run some or all of your digital presence. If you're a small team, this might be interesting for you. We can help you get to the next level. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Brian Ostrovsky. I look forward to speaking with you in the future.